truly, truly uh, amazing. And then to do it in Madison Square Garden, it, it was just insane. And it seems you had a bit of an accident this morning, correct? You yeah. hurt yourself? I hurt myself this morning bad. And, and look, sometimes I go into the octagon and I hear it in the buildup, like, when is this guy going to get old? You know, it could happen overnight. I thought it happened this morning. I sneezed. And I slipped my back out, guys. I was hurting bad. Like, seriously, I was... We got some pictures that we may release later in the week, but, like, I, I sneezed, and because I sneezed, my back slipped out. And I was... I went to try to do my morning run, and it wasn't happening. I uh, went back in the UFC. You know, they have uh, the Performance Institute. They travel with us now. So Heather Linden... And uh, Clint Wattenberg, they came over with the massage table, with the stem machine, with all kinds of uh, stuff to try to help me release my back. And then at around 12, 1 o'clock, it was to the point that I was still kind of singed over and leaning. And Bob Cook was all, uh, if you don't get better, then we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to fight. So it was real close. I said, just let me take a nap. I said, if you let me take a nap, I'll see if... Uh, if I feel better and I woke up and, and uh, went went for a walk and when I went for a walk and got active uh, my back started to release a little bit it was very scary because I really had no idea how we were going to explain that like I mean I, I I was like I don't know how we're going to explain this like that I sneezed and hurt my back that's that's getting old <laughs> that's what that is right, and so your performance wouldn't have shown it did you feel you know as good as you could have in the octagon against Derek well, once I got, once I started feeling better, I just really like kind of turned up the feeling better. I mean, sometimes you can almost mentally make yourself feel better. Like, uh, but again, this is three three week training camp, and generally when I'm in fight camp, at about three weeks, my back does kind of go bad, and then I have to take a few days off to recover. But I usually have five weeks left at training. Just so happened that it happened on the day of the fight. But once I got into the octagon, we just made a, we had a real focus of, of being uh, being very bundled up and just really hot. Once I got warm, I mean, my locker room was, the temperature was at about 85 degrees. Because once I got warm, I needed to stay warm. I was wearing old busted up sweatpants, an Oklahoma State wrestling sweat top, because I needed to make sure that uh, once, I, once I got hot and I got sweating, I didn't cool down because when you when you have when your back's bothering you when you cool down it's over like you are done for the rest of the afternoon it would have been unfortunate if i was done for the rest of the night yeah that's crazy so um going forward from here it seems like the brock lesnar fight is next the ufc just announced its schedule for next year there's ufc 235 which is beginning of march two weeks before your birthday Dana said he wants you to take some time off after taking this fight. So does that seem like that could be the last one, the farewell fight? Yep, that could be the retirement fight for old DC. That's crazy, right? When you start to think about it, uh, you know, talk about having an opportunity to go out on an all-time high. You know, headlining in Vegas against Brock Lesnar uh, before I turned 40, two weeks before my birthday, have my biggest fight. Um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's crazy, but. I'm glad that he wants me to take some time because I stepped up on short notice and honestly, I fought three times this year with three finishes. Three championship fights, three finishes. You know, I've had a big year, probably one of my more active years that I've had in a long time and uh, it just feels good to, to get my hand raised and it looks like uh, March um, 3rd, is it the 3rd, 4th? March 2nd. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so March 2nd, 2019 could be the last time you guys see me fight in the octagon. Well, that's sad to hear, but um, <laughs> in terms of the actual fight against Brock himself, how do you see this thing going? I mean, is this a guy that can test you, or do you see yourself being very dominant against him like you have in some of, you know, majority of your fights? I think he can test me. I mean, I, he's a big, strong guy, and he his wrestling kind of cancels out my biggest advantage over most people. This guy's an NCAA wrestling champ. He's a... The four-time All-American, uh, was second as a junior, two-time junior college national champ. I mean, Brock is a beast, man. I know I talk a lot of trash about him, but he is a real-life beast, and he's a guy that, that is going to uh, really push me, and I'm excited about it. Uh, could you imagine the visual? I mean, me standing across the octagon from Brock Lesnar, it's going to be insane. 
but it's also going to be fun. And it's another opportunity for me, my, for me to test myself uh, in the octagon because that's what I'm doing. You know, right now it's about testing. Um, fighting these bigger guys is always a test. Um, I just want to talk about the fight. Uh, you, in the post-fight interview, you talked about getting caught um, and that you were blinking for about 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that exchange? I, I don't know what happened exactly. He, I think when I picked his leg up, he punched me. Now, I did that with Rumble, and Rumble hit hard, but not like this dude. When this dude hit me, I was like, holy smokes. I don't know if he like just like threw it as hard as he possibly could or what, but it was powerful. I was like, wow, Derek Lewis is really powerful. I was like, I need to stay on this dude's legs. So I just kept wrestling. I mean, I just kept wrestling. My boys at Gilroy would be proud. They'll be proud. You know, all my little wrestlers would be proud about uh, Coach going out there, securing some takedowns. Uh, first takedown, I got him uh, with that inside trip. Second one was a, a single leg, ran the pipe. Third one was uh, I, I shelved his leg up and threw him down. And the last one, I actually got a front headlock to an ankle pick, which is something you don't generally get in fights, but he had kind of gotten lost. You know, he, we like to say lost in the sauce. You know, you give him so many things that they can't keep up. Because in fighting, a lot of guys have good baseline defense. So you just keep throwing things at them until something sticks at the wall. Keep throwing at the wall, throwing at the wall, something will stick. Uh, that ankle pick knocked him back, and he kind of looked like, ah, again, I'm on my back again. You know, and, and then Coach uh, Leandro said, uh, KC control. It's a system that we've worked for a long time, check mat. And uh, when he did it, I covered the legs, and he turned back to his knees and just presented his neck. I mean... He's the first guy, though, that when I got him in half guard, I start to punch him, and he turns to his knees, and I catch the inside wrist. I love to do that. That's like my favorite position, grabbing the inside wrist and just starting to let go with the other hand. He still got up. That's how strong this dude was. And I was holding his wrist, and he still got to his feet. It was, it was crazy. I thought about just like letting him go and trying to kick him in the head, but the danger in that was that I might have to stand up with him again. I was like, I'd rather just grab his leg. Uh, one last question about uh, the fight. You know, did anything surprise you in how he approached it? Um, I know he threw a couple switch kicks, yeah. uh, you know, a few front leg kicks. Um, anything surprise you, or was that in the game plan? That's what we expected. I mean, he's always done that. You know, it's a lot of big actions with Derek Lewis. It's not like um, you can watch guys. Like, you watch a guy that's throwing everything, but he's not necessarily throwing everything with 100% power. Like, I don't. I kind of throw things to set and get to the, the shot that I think is going to be super meaningful. But Derek doesn't do that. Like those big jumping kicks and those big huge actions that he does is just him. So he, uh, I expected it. That one leg kick he threw in the first round, I kind of turned to check it, but I didn't get my shin all the way forward. So I took it on like the outside of my leg. My leg's a bit swollen now from one kick. It's crazy. Champ over here. Uh, congrats on your performance tonight. Thank you, sir. Where, where do you rate Derek as opposed to some of your other opponents that you faced this year, especially going up against Stipe? Uh, you know, he's not as good as Stipe, obviously. Stipe's uh, the, the, the most successful heavyweight champion we've ever had. You know, he's, uh, he's a tremendous fighter, and he's, he's really good. Derek is a specialist. A lot of times, specialists really struggle with guys that can do just about everything. Because the reality of the situation is, if I was forced to stand with him, I would have, you know. But he did not have the same option as me when it came to the grappling, right? He, I could have stood with him if I needed to, but I didn't need to because of the wrestling. He can obviously stand with me, but he can't grapple with me. He does not have that ability, and specialists tend to struggle like that, just like the jiu-jitsu guys. When they can only grapple, they struggle when they're forced to stand. You've got to be a well-rounded mixed martial artist if you want to be successful in this game. And uh, second and final question from me. Second highest pay-per-view behind USC 229 uh, for you tonight at the Garden. You've got that fight coming up against Brock, possibly. He just won the WWE title last night. Where do you see that put you in terms of negotiating your next fight, your final fight? Do you think that kind of puts you over the top compared to this fight tonight? I don't, I don't, I don't understand what you just said. Uh, in, 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How would you no. know how to pay per view is dead? No, no, it's a, it's a gate of the year. Gate of the year. <laughs> the gate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Hey, so here's the deal with the gate, right? When when we got announced for this fight, the arena was still pretty empty. I mean, honestly, and and they had some good fights on this card, you know. So I think that is a testament to maybe what Derek had gained in terms of his his following. Or I've always had full arenas, you know, whether they're booing me or cheering me. I've always had full arenas, which is which is a a really a good thing, you know. Um, Buffalo last year was filled to the brim when I fought against uh, Anthony Johnson. Um, Obviously, uh, when Jones and I fight, it's always full. Uh, Gustafson in Houston, full. Like, every time I fight, it's full. My next fight, when it comes to Lesnar, I, I gotta be honest with you guys. Like, when it comes to negotiating, like, I kind of just ask and they just kind of do it. Like, it's really not like me going, I want $3 million. And they go, no. It's almost like, oh, okay, you kind of deserve it. And they just kind of been doing it. Like, it's, a, it's just like when you do things the right way, they kind of, uh, they, they respect that. And Dana White's that type of guy. You know, he he really does take care of me in a lot of different ways. They said it was the second highest commercial pay-per-views of the year, so the bars and everything behind 229. I don't even know what that means. So the sales and bars and like... Well, that's good. So. That means I'm going to be getting the check. <laughs> what happened to UFC 226? It's supposed to be the super fight. <laughs> God dang, man. <laughs> Steve, eh? <A. laughs> I'm not taking no fault. I'm not taking no fault. Steve, eh? <laughs> I'm not taking no fault. DC. Uh, so this is the, the book is closed on, uh, on 205 pounds now. Is that is that correct? You're, you're you know, so here, here's the thing, Marundi. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing. You know, you know my actual name. That's yeah, Romani. Okay. Romani. Yes, I do know your name's Romani. But one time he did a he did a uh, pre-fight show and he might have picked me to lose, so I've been calling him Romani from that day forward. But we've really that's four years ago. Mother. Four years ago, I've been calling him Romani. But we we have squashed our beef. We had Brazilian camp the other day together. It was awesome. Brigadero. Brigadero. There you go. And it was really good. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Light heavyweight, that, like, the book.